Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Hendrik Thiel. I'm the responsible sales director from Hitech. And, well, as I said, I'm the sales director. I'm not a technical guy. And my colleague, Roland Kochek, was planned to give this presentation until Friday afternoon, German time. Then it switched in. So if it's going a little bit too deep into the techniques, I want to ask you not to give me these questions. We can talk about this later on. And I'm also having my, my little... Uh, papers with me not to forget anything. Well, in the next 20 minutes, I want to talk about high-speed serial backplane architectures. Well, we had just prepared a little comparison in between VPX, CPCI serial, and XTCA solutions. The agenda is going to be as followed. We're going to have a historical review, a technical comparison, the market view, a commercial view, and a summary of conclusion. Well, we just decided to take the bigger picture looking at it from different sides and not only from one perspective. Well, if we are looking at the historical review, all of these single or, or high-speed backplane architectures now as well, the serial ones started in the 1980s. On the top, you're seeing the picnic, and on the bottom, the Vita. And in general, we can say in 2003, with ATCA, we got the first serial high-speed backplane architecture. Um, Vita was always a little bit ahead of the PICMIC, and we've seen with VPX, OpenVPX, that they are kind of a few years behind, uh, before the, the Vita with the CPCI serial, starting in 2011. Well, all of these different architectures are having the <coughs> different markets to, to go in, and we know that there are more others, especially single board computer architectures, but we just took the major ones. Well, if we are now going into the technical comparison, well, there you can see that we just picked the compact PCI serial on the left, the VPX, open VPX in the middle, and the XCCA on the right side. We always picked two form factors, two standard form factors out of these technologies, like the 3U and the 6U on the CPCI serial and on the VPX side, and the ATCA and micro TCA on the um, XCCA side. If we are comparing all of these technologies, we are always talking about high-speed technologies. That's clear. But the connector bandwidth, it's always a fast one. As I said, always high-speed. If we are looking at the number of pairs, this is always a little bit different, especially if we are looking at the form factor, because the smaller form factors, three ones, have less number of pairs than the big ones. And I'm going to come to a certain qualitative Comparison on the next slide, where we're going to talk about this, but um, it always varies on the size of the board and the speed per line. You can always say the bigger the board, the faster the speed is, the more number of pairs you have. Um, we also compared all topologies like the single star, the dual star, and the full mesh backplane architectures. And the connector pinout is always defined by the spec, especially in the compact PCI serial and the XCCA world. We have the so-called user IOs. In the VPX, we always know that we have the different profiles. And, well, if we compare the different specs of it, compact PCI serial is a spec of 128 pages. If we are only looking at the different profiles of the VPX spec, we have more than 700 pages to go in there. This is kind of a beauty and beast in this case. But it's also showing what's possible in the VPX field. Um, if you're looking at the, at the different um, PSOs, uh, PSUs, the power suppliers, you always have the 12 volt, and the bigger the system, the more possibilities you have, kind of plus minus 48 volts also as well. There's also the VPX field, the five volt, and in the ATCA, the minus 48 volts. Conduction cooled is possible nowadays, but all of the different standards but you can also have the systems cooled by the via airflow. Well, in the VPX, as I said, good news, bad news, you are only compatible within the profiles, but there is no intercomparability without or in between the profiles. If we are now coming to the qualitative comparison, we just made it with pluses, minuses, and O's. Well, you can always argue about these ones, but we try to compare it qualitatively.
in the bandwidth between the number of pairs. This was our main reason. VPX in the 3U has only 64 pairs and micro TCA only four pairs. This is why these ones have been rated a little bit less than the other ones because in the compact PCI serial and the ATCA and the VPX 6U world, we have a lot of more number of pairs in this. But still, these are also high speed backplane architectures. If we are looking at the user defined IOs, well, this is always the thing which is the beauty and the beast, as I said, in the VPX. We have the profiles, and so you have a lot of user-defined IOs to, to choose. Same in the ATCA world, there it's called in the, the, the zones. And in the compact PCI serial world, you just have the few user IOs, but there is nothing more to, to program. This is why they are a little bit lagged behind. The power envelope, well, in the VPX spec, it's possible to put 768 watts into the system. Again, such a beauty and the beast to say it like this, because, well, if you're putting that much power in there, you have to cool it also as well. With CCA, it's much easier, but if you have to get it cooled by an airflow, this is kind of a problem in this case. Well, ruggedness, yeah, it's possible, as I said, to, to set up all of these systems in a rugged way, but as we are looking at the connectors in the VPX world, I call them the heavy metal connectors. That's even more rugged than the other ones. This is why VPX is ahead in this case. Conduction cooled, as I said, it's possible in every architecture except of advanced TCA. And if we are looking at the simplicity, well, this is what I said by talking about the specs. I'm having a 128-page spec for a compact PCI serial. I'm having more than 700 pages of spec for the VPX. And the ATCA spec is even also as well quite complicated, and the micro TCA spec is a little bit easier. This is why a compact PCI serial is, from the simplicity of point of view, quite the easiest one. If we are talking about the compatibility, well, for a user, what is compatibility in this case? The user has its card compact PCI serial, and he can plug in the card into every compact PCI serial system. This is not possible in the VPX world because you have to compare which profile you have. You cannot interconnect an I.O. card into a VPX system just from one to the other if it's another profile. In the ATCA world, you have to look at the zones. Same in the micro TCA world. This is why we are thinking that in the compatibility is easier in the compact PCI serial field. Well. This is just a qualitative comparison. It's not the, the, the thing that we are saying compact PCI serial is a better standard or a worse standard. Well, we as high-tech, we are not a board manufacturer. We are providing the system platforms. We are providing both of these systems or all the three of the systems. So all of these standards are having their industry sector to be pretty competitive in. And this is the reason why they are pretty good in these different fields. But you have to take attention or you have to pay attention on which field these systems are pretty good in. Well, next thing is we just tried to make a, search, uh, a market research. For this market research, we used more than one of the new venture research corporations market research in order to get a better picture. If we are looking at the total market size of the merchant embedded computing systems across all market segments and sub-architectures, we guesstimated it at three and a half to, uh, to four and a half billion dollars. Well, in this case, we are not talking about the whole merchant embedded computing market. We are just talking about the switched serial high-speed backplane architectures market. As I said, we compared the three leading standards. One is Compact PCI, the other one is XTCA, and the third one is VME, which includes VPX in this case. And these ones, we're going to look a little bit deeper in there. Growth is forecasted for all of these architectures. However, significant differences once we will drill deeper. One of the most interesting things is that still the telecommunication field is the one which is forecasted to grow the fastest. Well, now we are looking a little bit deeper in there. We have no major change of the split in the forecasted. Communication was and is, as I said, 
the major user of open standards based backplane architectures, as we can see, with 47% of all users in there. Mill and Arrow continues to be strong and important. VPX, VME with 26%, and automation continuing to find niches where high performance scalable systems are required. Automation in this case also includes industrial transportation and all of these things. Other applications with 4% and the medical with 4% of high speed uh, serial backplane architectures. Well, now looking into these different uh, market segments, you can remember communication was 47% of the whole market share and into the communication field, XTCA, well, as all of us uh, thought it's going to be, is with 58% in there. And on the other hand, we have 39% for compact PCI serial. VME is not in there. In the automation, we have kind of a split by XTCA solutions also as well with 46%. CPCI and VME split it by a third kind of this. In the medical field, compact PCI is the strongest, followed by the VME bus. And Mill Arrow, on the other hand, this is VME VPX by 86%. The rest is an only together compared 14%. In the other applications, which is kind of 4% of the total market share, we see the VME and the compact PCI as a split. Next thing we just wanted to look at is the commercial view. Availability, costs. Well, next thing we looked at, how many vendors are there for the different architectures? Well, this was an empirical study. We just searched for vendors of products based on these architectures. We used search engines, Google, etc., and trade associations like the PICMEG and the Vita and however. We did this because, well, as I said, we are providing all of these solutions. We just wanted to get an own overview of what is in there. This was the reason for our internal research. Well, if we are looking at the different architectures, it's quite an interesting picture. Compact PCI serial. Well, this is mainly sold in Europe and in Asia, and also as well by European and Asian vendors. We only have 26, 27 vendors producing compact PCI serial solutions, which means boards, chassis, and complete systems. They are not more on the market. VPX, as we all know, mainly in North America, and also mainly North American vendors. There we have a little bit more than 70 companies selling these solutions on the market. And in the XCCA field, this is used all around the globe. There we have the most vendors of it. It's 87 vendors in this case. So this is also giving us kind of a perspective of where these products have these, these markets to grow in. To, be, um, to say it like this, I think VPX has a huge potential in Europe. CPCI serial also as well on over here in the United States. But what is the difference from a commercial point of view in this case? We just compared connectors and also as well board level products in this case. Basis was we send an anonymous request for 100 pieces to single vendors to get it back. This is no special pricing. This is just a standard pricing for 100 pieces just to compare it. If we are looking at the connectors, well, Amphenol is also here in the room. We see the costs for the, the connectors for a the typical 3U bought by 60 US dollars. On the other hand, we see 220 US dollars of costs for VPX connectors. Well, this is kind of four times the price of it. There's a huge difference in between. If we are looking at the board level products, same thing, 100 pieces anonymous request. We see a CPCI serial CPU board with a a third generation i7, 8, 8 gigabits of, of RAM for 4,400 4, US dollars. On the other hand, same for the VPX, same functionality for 5,900 dollars, which is even 34% more expensive than the compact PCI serial ones. This is the reason why we, we said we want to compare apples and apples and not apples and oranges. This is what we put in behind. We split off and we did not compare it with the ATCA because this is a totally different world of it. Okay, I have to speed up a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm going to make it. <laughs> well, we are also already coming to the end then. Well, this means 
I don't want to talk about the reasons in behind why VPX is even more expensive than compact PCI serial. I think it depends on the markets it's going to go, go in there. One is the military field, we all know about this, and the other one is the industrial, which is much more price sensitive on the other hand. Well, just coming to the summary and the conclusions, if we're looking at the different things, compact PCI and compact PCI serial, while it's easy to use, has limited options, thus we're very compatible. Very cost competitive, we've seen it. It's even cheaper on the single, uh, on the board side and on the, on the connector side. We have also as well rugged options, strong in the automation and in the medical field, strong in Europe and in Asia, but still weak here in the US. Potential is to gain more acceptance in the United States. VME, VPX, extremely flexible and complex, thus limited compatibility due to the different profiles. We heard about the SOSA yesterday, maybe it's going to be better in the future. Pretty costly, a bit more rugged, very strong in the Melandero, very strong here in the United States, weak in other segments and in Europe, potential to migrate into Europe, Asia, mill markets, there's also huge potential for these technologies and we as a European company are gonna push it also as well into the European market. XTCA, well, ITCA is ideal for high level redundant communication applications. ATCA continues to be successful there, but out of our point of view, we are seeing huge potential of ATCA-based systems. Customers are not willing to buy 100% ATCA systems anymore. They are just putting it down, taking the good things out of the spec, and then doing it a customer-specific solutions. It's pretty complex and costly, but still very compatible. MicroTCA.4 found its niche in the physics market around the globe. We are seeing a lot of potential in this field also as well, and we are also stepping in there. And other markets are only exceptionally to say it like this. Well, this was it. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions from your side? And please stay on the 30,000 foot level.